No, I've never been a fan of Facebook, as you probably know. I've never been a big Zuckerberg fan. I think he's a real problem. Uh huh. They didn't used to like Zuckerberg because they didn't think they could control him and all the conservatives meet on Facebook and talk about unauthorized things. That was Joe Biden last December. Very different Joe Biden now. He's not saying much about Facebook. He's helping Facebook. Of course, things have changed a lot since then. Biden's transition team has started hiring top officials and lobbyists from Silicon Valley. Why? Well, let's see. Facebook and Twitter and Google, too, censored stories about Hunter Biden's business deals, the Biden family's business deals, with businesses connected directly to the Communist Chinese Party. Tonight, we're learning more, though. Dozens of executives at Facebook, of which Biden is not a fan, and Twitter, started spending big on Joe Biden in the race. For example, at Facebook, the vice president of public policy, Aaron Egan, donated more than $99,000 to Democrats this year, including Biden. At Twitter, a senior director of product management called James Kellum donated more than five grand just to Joe Biden. And there are many more, of course. So in total, what are these contributions, the pattern of money moving from Silicon Valley into the coffers of the Democratic Party and Joe Biden, what do they tell us? Candace Owens is one of our all-time favorites. We're happy to have her on tonight to unravel this mystery. So, Candace, you look at these numbers, you look at the behavior of the party, what do you conclude? I conclude that this is the least shocking story of 2020 yeah. well, for any American that has been paying attention um, uh, to what we have been seeing this year in terms of what, what is really just mass censorship. And here's what's really rich, Tucker. Do you remember when uh, the leftist media hacks were trying to convince us that the big, evil, scary GOP plot to, to voter suppress uh, existed in people waiting in line to vote? Remember, to cast their ballots in Georgia, they showed a picture of a perfectly average line and said, look, the GOP is uh, suppressing votes. This is a form of voter suppression. And every time you see something like this, a ridiculous story, you know that the job of a really good media hack is to make sure Americans are looking the wrong way when real crimes and real issues are actually peeping up. One such issue is the way that Facebook and Twitter virtually intervened um, on this election cycle. And That's they right. did this uh, quite openly via fact checkers that popped up out of nowhere. Fact checkers that were pulling down stories like the Hunter Biden story, suppressing it, saying missing context. Uh, we don't have the information. Joe Biden hasn't confirmed that his son is guilty. Therefore, this story is somehow untrue. Well, we always knew if these fact checkers weren't checking facts, what they were doing was suppressing information. And that is a form of voter suppression. Well, of course it is, and of course nothing's being done about it to this day. But the clarity of the payoff here, I mean, even as Joe Biden is criticizing Facebook, clearly didn't mean it, Facebook's employees are sending him money, Facebook's owners are working around the clock to get him elected, spending a lot of hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, they're basically buying the Biden people. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And the American people know this. And the question is, what is going to actually be done about this? Obviously, there exists some relationship uh, behind the scenes, and they feel comfortable under a Biden and Harris administration. And they didn't have that level of comfort. Trump was talking about uh, revoking their protections under Section 230, which they should. By the way, I'm not against Facebook having opinion or having a position, as long as they are okay. willing to admit that they are, in fact, a publisher. You are a publisher. You are pulling down information that you don't like because you are a publisher. They should be afforded no protections under 230. And that's exactly what Trump was trying to do. And I feel that now under a Biden-Harris administration, they will be perfectly protected to continue suppressing and censoring any information that they don't like. I mean, can you imagine in 1980 if General Motors and General Electric and IBM got together and said, you know, we run this country. We're picking the president this year. I think the media would say something about it, right? You'd think so, but this, the, the media today, this is not something that people trust. You're seeing this. Uh, it's really, it's broken down. They no longer represent the thoughts and the opinions of the people. They are bought out by corporations, and they are there to make sure that the corporate narrative um, is protective. They're bought out by politicians. They're there to make sure that certain politicians are protected. This goes on behind the scenes, and the American people know this. And, and it's uh, unfortunate that we've seen this in this regard. It feels like it's sped up over this last year. We've never, ever seen this level of suppression and censorship in America. A Praetorian guard for the powerful. I agree completely. Candace Owens, great to see you tonight. Thank you.